We talked about advanced glycosylated end products earlier. We said they're not very good. And you can actually get them from meat. Your body can make them, but you can also ingest them. And we suspect that ingesting them is probably not great. But the main concern that a lot of people tell me when they have preserved meats is, what about the preservatives? The nitrates in bacon, for instance. So I like to ask, what's got more nitrate? A hot dog or celery? Oh. Celery. 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 I'll translate. What? Celery. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll just put my dentures back in now. <laughs> now, um, the highest concentration of nitrates in a food that I know of is beetroot juice. And we actually use this in athletes for performance enhancement. It leads to improved blood flow to the exercising muscles and several other effects. So this whole concern about nitrates as a preservative, I, I, I don't see it. Um, I certainly do believe that there is a concern about charring the meat. Um, certainly we know that you can reduce some of these uh, aromatic chemicals and advanced glycosylated end products if you cook your meat in a moist fashion. And certainly you should avoid oils that have a low smoke point um, because we think that they can give off some carcinogenic compounds. But overall, I think if you're cooking your meat at a reasonable temperature. And here's the thing, if you have grass-fed meat, there's been shown to be a significant reduction in E. coli levels. That meat is far healthier than grain-fed. Why? I don't know, but that's what the data shows. So grass-fed meat, you don't need to blacken it to cook it. Cook it on a low heat, maybe moist heat. It's probably not gonna be that bad for you. I still love my meat.